Hi, so I hate to say this, and I don't mean to be rude, but basically, if you don't know what graphene is, it could be you've been living under a rock. Graphene is the wonder material of our new millennia. It's a single layer of graphite, arranged a bit like chicken wire. It is so useful, it's getting into absolutely everything. You're finding it in batteries, conductive plastics, added into concrete, just a million things. Now, it is a huge subject under constant research with people looking at it continually. And I'm going to try and break it down into a few videos. Now, it might be a little bit like trying to put the Bible across in a couple of user-friendly sound bites, but hey, we'll give it a go and see how it goes. Now, in order to get hold of your graphi graphene, there's only really a couple of ways of doing it. It breaks down into the top-down approach or the bottom-up approach. The bottom-up approach is where you take some carbon and you try to arrange it in that chicken wire. The top-down approach is where you take the already formed material and try to strip it out. And this is your basic material when you're looking at a top-down. Now clearly we're going to do top-down first, so we're going to start with graphite. When you start with your graphite, what you're looking at doing is taking those multiple layers and separating those layers out into individual layers. Now, there's only really three ways of doing it. You can either do it chemically, mechanically, or electrically. And we're going to deal with the chemical method in this particular video. So just to give it a bit of context, we're using a top-down method and a chemical exfoliation to get our graphene from our graphite. Now, the first experiment we've done with this was back in the 1800s by a guy called Hummer. Now, I believe he was Scottish. I also believe he was a reverend. And I also believe he had an intense interest in useless science. Because back then, nobody had any use for graphite or graphene or graphene oxide. Had he got a YouTube channel, my guess is he would have done the whole experiment and his comments would have been, well, that was a lot of work for nothing. But he went there and he did it. And our method at the moment, what we use this top-down approach, is essentially based on what Hummer did. Now, Hummer's method uses some pretty nasty stuff. The basics you need to get a top-down approach for creation of graphene is your graphite, some of this stuff, and some of this stuff. This stuff is 96% con concentrated sulfuric acid. So not something you want to go drinking much of and something you want to take a lot of care with, hence PPE. These are heavy duty gloves and they'll be what I'll be wearing when I'm using this acid. Down here, where you can't see it, is an enormous bucket of water. And right next to it is an enormous bucket of sodium carbonate. That's my spill kit. Something goes wrong, I can lash that stuff over the acid and make sure that I neutralise it, or I can chuck it in there and basically run away. So I've got a spill kit prepared there, I've got PPE here, and I'll be wearing glasses when I start mixing this stuff. When you put the acid in, you're really just handling acids, so the sensible acid care is going to be okay. When you add this stuff, then you actually get an explosive combination that heats up really quickly, and so pretty scary stuff and that is the problem with hummers so everybody was looking at hummers and how to make it less expensive less scary and less dangerous now one of the great modifications that came out is something called the tour method hummers use a straightforward sulfuric acid a mixture of sodium nitrate and potassium permanganate incidentally but of course you can't get sodium nitrate anymore because that's what you use to make explosives so pretty much everybody's using potassium permanganate Tua used a mixture of 90% sulfuric and 10% phosphoric acids. That worked so much better. Now, if you want these recipes, all you actually do is put Hummer's method into Google or Tua method into Google, and you'll come across their original papers where they just highlight the recipe for you. And you can follow that recipe. It's just simply written down, follow it. Obviously, follow it with care. Now, once the tour method was developed, things really began to take off a little bit, but they're still pretty dangerous, so you see an awful lot of modification of that basic recipe. But that basic recipe remains the same. You have some acid, you've got your graphite, and some oxidizing agent. The reason for that is what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the acid in between the layers of the graphite to open them up. That in between an opening is intercalation. When we shove something in that layer of graphite, we have intercalated something.
This is actually bisulfide intercalation, and it goes a kind of blue colour, which is why they call it blue graphite. Now, you can intercalate all kinds of things into graphite, actually. And NASA did some great research back in the 60s on something called artificial metals, where they're intercalating all kinds of things like uh, bromine, chlorine, iodine, ferric chloride, just a ton of stuff that will actually go in there and make different coloured graphites with superconductivity. So if you intercalate potassium into graphite, it gets what's called golden graphite, which is a room temperature superconductor. Slight problem, it's pyrophoric. So if it's in the air, it'll just burst straight into flames. But this intercalation methodology is extremely important to graphite per se and graphite materials per se. If you intercalate bisulfide, which is what we're going to do as the basis of hummus, then explode it out into expanded graphite, you can re-roll it and you get flexible graphite, which is used in oil seals, uh, steam seals. So this chemistry, this methodology, it's been around for ages, has hundreds of uses and is well researched. And of course, that's a problem in itself because all of that information really just leads to complexity. The basic thing you have to remember is where it fits in. So what we're looking at is top-down approach of graphene using, an electro using a chemical methodology for intercalation into graphite. Now, we're going to go towards something called Seagull, which is sulfuric acid intercalated graphite oxide. The Seagull is a precursor material for everything else that we might want to do. For example, exfoliated graphite or going to graphene. So that's the one we're going to focus on. But it's only part of that methodology because we use the same basic materials with little tweaks here and there to do all of those jobs. Essentially, you chuck the graphite into the acid Add an oxidizer to open up the edges and the acid will get sucked inside the graphite. That's pretty much all there is to it. So let's give that a go. So what I've got here is 100 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. If it was a tour method, like I say, it would be 90 milliliters of acid and 10 milliliters of phosphoric acid. If you want to do the different methods, do do the research on the suggestions that I'm making. I'm trying to give you an overview of things. Now what you do basically is take your graphite, and in this case we're going to put half a gram of graphite in there, and chuck it in there. Now there's no danger at this stage, okay? It's just graphite and sulfuric acid and we give it a good old stir. Now that is a massive excess of sulfuric acid. If we wanted to do an intercalation compound, then we'd do something like 100 grams. It's actually 100 parts to 150 to 200 parts graphite to acid. So we'd have 50 grams of graphite, 100 milliliters of acid. That would give us a, an intercalation mix with half a gram and 100 milliliters. That gives us an um, graphene oxide mix, because that's where we're going to go with the graphene oxide. And just give it a good stir until the whole thing's mixed in, because there's no danger. Well, there's acid, obviously, but there's no real danger as long as you take precautions at this level. Don't forget your spill kit. So we're using an acid, so you want a nice harmless alkali kicking around. I tend to use sodium bicarbonate or sodium carbonate just to chuck on any acid spills so that I don't inadvertently lean in them later on when I'm eating my lunch or drinking my forbidden coffee. Anyway, give the whole thing a stir and let it mix up really, really nicely. If you look carefully at that, actually, you'll see it popping a little bit. Now, a little bit of pop popping is the intercalation action act all by itself. So the bisulfate has been drawn into the galleries of the graphite. Now we left that for about a million years or so, it'll probably do it all by itself. Now that's a bit slow obviously, so we're going to help that along. And the way we help it along is by oxidizing the edges. Now remember the graphite is in layers like this. If we oxidize the edges, those layers at the edges get spread further apart so it can intercalate much more easily, and it does. But it's extremely rapid. So when you've got this ready, the next thing you need to do is to chill it. You need to chill it down to about zero degrees, and you're going to add the oxidizing agent in very small amounts. <laughs> do not chuck it all in there at once, or you will be extremely sorry. You add it in very small amounts and in an ice bath to help control that temperature. The temperature of this should not go above 40, 45 degrees centigrade, something like that. You add a little bit and you stir it like crazy. 
Because if you don't stir it like crazy, those little bits that you add will get localised heating and it'll begin to pop and fizz at the local point. So you need to get it stirring, add a little bit, keep stirring it and keep your eye on that temperature to make sure that temperature isn't getting above 40, 45, 50 degrees centigrade. So it's that kind of amount you add at a time. Just a so little what bit. I'm after is something called seagull, which is sulfuric acid intercalated graphene oxide. No, graphite oxide, sorry. And for that, what I've done is I've mixed 100 millilitres of sulfuric acid, 50 grams of graphite and 5 grams of potassium permanganate in this jar, which is what I've been stirring like crazy. Now it's got a kind of deep blue colour, which is why they call it blue graphite. What you do with it after that is basically dry it and exfoliate it. But the same process for Seago is exactly the same for expanded graphite and for the Hummus method and for the Tours method. They just differ a little bit in the ingredients. And the ingredients are easy to look up, like I say. So it's the same process, same ideas, same methodology for all of those different things. And that's part of what makes it confusing. Now, it is important on what size your graphite particles are. If you're looking for graphene oxide and you want a quick reaction, well, small particles, five microns or so. Slow reaction, large particles, 0.3 of a millimetre or so. If you're wanting a good exfoliated graphite, about 45 microns or so is a really good size to look at because that's enough to get the acid in there, but hold it in there in the later washing process so that when you heat it and it exfoliates, it will exfoliate successfully. So particle size can matter, but methodology is always the same. And the key thing about it is Keep it cool, stir it like crazy, don't add everything too much, and don't do a lot at once. Now, all we do with this, give a little time for that reaction to happen, and the paste will thicken up. Now, in this Seago, it'll just get thick paste because all the acid will be sucked into the graphite galleries. In the Hummers method, in the Tour method, it causes a kind of brown colour because you've got an excess of potassium permanganate, so you're forming manganese dioxide. It'll go green at first and then a kind of brown colour. Then when that reaction is done, you chuck in your hydrogen peroxide, it'll go bright yellow. That's your graphene oxide. We're going to leave that for a little bit just to thicken up a bit. So once you've given that a bit of a wash and filtered it, I mean, you add about half a litre of water to what we had and then you give it a filter. What you'll get is this stuff. Now, this is still a little bit damp, actually. You're supposed to dry it at 50 degrees centigrade or less. Yeah, drying over now on top of a radiator, something like that. But I love this bit, actually, so I'm going to give you a close-up of it. So all we're looking at is a pan on a hot plate, and I'm going to put a bit of this stuff onto that hot surface. Okay, it's not normal to do it like that, it would be a bit slow. What you actually do is bang it in a kiln at five or six hundred degrees centigrade and the whole thing goes woof and you get this big mass and you end up with a bucket full of exfoliated graphite. Now we did that because that is the basis of all of the chemical methods. Now when you say something like that, you're inevitably getting somebody pointing something else out to you. But essentially, that's what it is. You get something in the galleries of the graphite and you explode it out into those worms separating out the plates. You can do other things after that. So we could do a mechanical method with that exfoliated graphite or we could run it through the Hummers method again and get a much better and faster reaction. Now we're going to cover other methodologies and I have done other videos on graphene but I thought I would bring them together under an umbrella to give it a kind of structure so you knew how to go about making graphene and all the options that there are. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.